<laughs> greetings, greetings. Hello, welcome to a special Monday edition of Danny G Live. <laughs> yes. Hope you guys are doing great. Hope you guys are doing wonderful. I've had an amazing weekend. Yes, welcome. Come into the room. Greetings. <laughs> hey, Stephanie. Hello, hello. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Welcome. Hey, Michelle. Yes, welcome into the room. Hi, Susan. Yes. Thank you guys for joining. What a weekend. What a day. Oh, it's a beautiful day today. Yes. Welcome. Oh, great. Oh, I'm so glad you're joining today. <laughs> Stephanie, yes. Oh, I, I have to go back and look, Stephanie. There was a lot. But yes, I will. Welcome. Happy Monday. Happy beginning of the week. Hi, Erin. <laughs> what a week that we had. Let me throw up some photos of my special Monday edition guest today from Ragamala Dance Company. Yes. Yes, Susan, I know. Yes. Okay, let's see. Yes, gorgeous. I'm so excited for this. Welcome. Thank you all for joining. Welcome, welcome. Let's see what else we have. Ah, gorgeous. This is from Ragamala Dance Company. Let's see what else. This amazing company. Oh, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Yes. Ah. Oh my God, from Evidence Dance, yes. Oh, and look, the three of them, three strong, powerful women, I love it. Yes, welcome everyone. <laughs> so I will start to turn this down. Again, welcome to a special Monday edition of Danny G Live. I'm gonna leave up this gorgeous photo of these three, powerful women on on my IG live photo here welcome welcome hi Melissa from Dallas black dance so first of all I just wanted to say thanks to everyone that showed up this weekend for the little island dance festival curated by Ayodhana Cassell and Toria beer which I was honored supremely honored to be a part of oh my goodness so if you weren't aware you weren't following all good but I was uh, honored to dance the solo from Grace, choreographed by Ronald K. Brown of Evidence Dance. And I danced on Friday as a guest artist with Evidence. And last night, <laughs> um, um, as well, uh, as part of a program called Don't Call It A Comeback, which also featured Aaron Maddox from The Joyce, who's watching right now, um, Anna, Fella, Anna Rockefeller Garcia from Full Circle Soldiers, uh, Toria Beard, one of the co curators, as well as Hank Smith, legendary tapper, hoofer, and artist. And so we had a brilliant, wonderful time. It was super emotional. And um, anyway, it was just really an honor to be on stage with all of those incredible artists and to be a part of this inaugural festival. So if you were there, if you showed up to either show, just know that I am so thankful and honored that you took the time to come out and see me dance again for the first time in 25 years it was a lot but um it was so well worth it and you know big ups to tiger bomb and advil for getting me through and so yes so congratulations to all the artists as well as my fellow stage mates and we got it done so on to the program so this is really exciting as well because Aaron Maddox who I shared the stage with last night um is the programming director for the Joyce and the Joyce Theater is about to reopen Finally, after all these months, 18 months later, I'm so excited that dance is coming back indoors at theaters. And I'm so happy to be a part of this, you know, this reopening, this, you know, the comeback, right? And so uh, Raga Model Dance Company opens on 
Wednesday, the 22nd at the Joyce Theater. And so just to give you a little background on the company before I bring in my guest, Aparna, uh, Ragamala Dance Company was founded in 1992 by Rani, I hope I'm saying that right, but they'll correct me when they come on, Ramaswamy, and is under the leadership of artistic directors Rani Ramaswamy and Aparna Ramaswamy, Swami and choreographic associate Ashwini Ramaswani, mother and daughters. Here they are pictured here. Rooted in the South Indian dance form of Bharatanatyam, the company has been hailed by the New York Times as soulful, imaginative, and rhythmically contagious. I love that. Driven by the artistic vision of Rani and Aparna, both Guggenheim Fellows, Ragamala Dance Company is the embodiment of an immigrant story. The company's work on stage in the community and educating the next generation exemplifies the intercultural narrative of countless global citizens and evokes a shared sense of humanity. Love that, of course. Ragamala Dance Company, which tours extensively throughout the world, engages in a collaborative practice rooted in the idea of bar Baranatyam as a sacred and dynamic living tradition. They embody the kindred relationship between ancient and contemporary they believe is urgently needed in today's world. Their training under legendary artist Alamel Vali forms the bedrock of a creative aesthetic that springs from legendary, from beauty, truth, and spirit. Ragamala is a woman-led, intergenerational, family-run organization committed to the idea that while history is time-bound, the stories we share are timeless. Oh, that just warms my heart to read all of this. Um, their work has been commissioned by the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts, the Hopkins Center for the Arts at Dartmouth College, Northrop at the University of Minnesota, where the company is based, uh, the Walker Art Center, Lincoln Center Out of Doors, the Art Center at NYU Abu Dhabi, Mini Center for the Performing Arts at the University of Washington, and the American Dance Festival. And just some quick press uh, highlights from, from over the years. Alastair McCauley from the New York Times. Ragamala shows how Indian forms can be some of the most transcendent experiences that dance has to offer. This is an excellent company. Aparna Ramaswamy is an enchantingly beautiful dancer. Yes. From Dance Magazine. Ragamala dance imbues the South Indian dance form of Bharatanatyam with a thoroughly contemporary exuberance, a visionary approach to an ancient art form. Oh, these are just wonderful. Uh, and from the Hindu, as Indian dancers based in the U.S., Ragamala's works reflect the rich heritage and deep philosophical roots of India, amalgamated with the inquisitiveness and creative liberty of the United States. Wonderful! Yes! So I cannot wait to meet my guest today, who we have never met in person, so this is really special for me. It's awesome. Uh, let me just take out the photo. Yes, and I believe she has sent me a request, and let's go grab them. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Okay, thank you guys for joining. Yes! <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm so happy to be I'm here. So wonderful. Thank you for joining me today. This of is course. So for me. It's thank my you. pleasure. Yes, thank you. You look wonderful. Oh, thank you. Yes. So, so you. please tell me, did I pronounce everything correctly? You did. I think um, Ramaswamy with an M. Um, but everything else, very impressive. Yeah. Right at the Nakiam, you, you just, um, you, you confronted everything head on. <laughs> Ramaswamy, so a partner Ramaswamy, so thank you for that. Well, first of all, congratulations on the comeback. And just, you know, I really want to know, you know, as a former dancer, always a dancer myself, just also as a presenter, it was incredible for us, you know, with Summer Stage in Central Park and, and other park venues, to finally come back to live in-person performance. Now the Joyce, even though we'll get to that really quickly, but that's not the first shows you guys have done in person since the shutdown. So tell us like what the first show back was and how did it feel? So the first public performance we did was it 
now feels like forever ago, it was actually last weekend <laughs> at the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C. And we did two performances outdoors. That was the premiere of this new work, Fires of Varanasi. And so we had, I think, 850 people at each one. Nice. And it was in a glorious setting. Like I said, it was outdoors. It was in front of their new set of buildings called The Reach. Mm -hmm. And it has a very long reflecting pool, I think 120 feet and another 40 feet of um, stage area. And so we use the entire breadth of the space uh, to really engage with the water, to engage with the nature around us. And that's how we premiered the piece. And it's actually a very different um, staging than what we'll be doing this week at the Joyce. And then between the two um, tours, we actually were at Dartmouth. And so we did the indoor premiere at the Hopkins Center at Dartmouth on Friday and Saturday mm -hmm. of this weekend. Well, congratulations for that. As sure. since, you know, all of us have been dealing with this pandemic, just go back a little bit before, because I guess you saw the showcase you guys did last January 2020 for APAC, which is sure. a conference in New York every year. Mm -hmm. And so I did get to see that. But so just tell us quickly how you and your company and the dancers, because you're based in Minneapolis. In Minneapolis, exactly. Right. So our last public performance was on March 8th, 2020. And when everything shut down, we actually had a whole group of musicians from India working with us in the studio, creating music for this piece. Oh. And we had we were supposed to work for 15 days. We worked for four mm -hmm. and we got them on flights before India, basically before all the flights shut down and they couldn't go back. And oh, so, my so thankful that they got home safely. But then in the, in the following 18 months after that, we um, wanted to absolutely stay in touch with our audiences. And so we did, just like every other company, we did a lot of online programming. We were so fortunate to be in touch with our various commissioners and partners. So we were able to reach wider audiences. So we have our wonderful audience Minneapolis, but then to go to other cities and be able to touch and connect with people online through talks and performances and videos. And we stayed very busy doing that. And we created this new work. Uh, we create, we connected with our dancers, of course, on Zoom. And because I work with my family, my mother, Rani, and my sister, Ashwini, we were a pod. And it was a wonderful, wonderful savior for us to be able to meet in our studio and work together on this new production. Uh, so we were keeping really busy and we were trying to keep in close touch with people as much as possible. And I think a lot of people were doing that just to really keep our connection with our humanity, right? Mm -hmm. And our, our fellow citizens. That's beautiful. That's absolutely correct. I mean, you know, with Summer Stage, we did a whole virtual season of performances and workshops and talkbacks and, and uh, artist to artist talkbacks, which were great, I think. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, you know, do, I, Instagram Live via the Summer Stage platform was very exciting for me. I mean, even though I started this platform prior to starting with, with Summer Stage, and it's been, it's been great. And so I did a panel a few weeks ago for the Joyce, actually, about is digital dance here to stay? So uh -huh. you think uh, Ragamala will continue the hybrid of some of the digital and in-person? I do. I do think so. I have to tell you that we are a company that um, it doesn't, I mean, I don't love <laughs> digital technology as much. And I, you know, I, it, it took a little bit of time to get used to it. And I think once we started to do it, we realized how 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 many people you can stay in touch with but also people are tuning in and then people who don't have an opportunity to make it to a performance or a class or a talk and all of a sudden i think we've all become very rapidly used to this medium mm -hmm. so i agree with you I and mean, i think it's here to stay but really in a hybrid sort of way mm -hmm. because you can't replace live performance oh no and, and yeah. i you never have to right know, do that. and so i mean the same with us i mean being back in front of an audience or presenting and seeing the audiences come into the venue. I mean, it was an overwhelming feeling to see them, seeing all the smiling faces. I mean, it was just wonderful. And so just, I mean, for the dancers, so when was the first time you all were able to come back together um, in, in the same room as a company? Sure. So 
We started getting together distant and masked. So actually, let me go back. Last summer, we did many rehearsals outdoors. Oh, beautiful. So it was actually really interesting. We went to various parks in Minneapolis, mm -hmm. and we found um, kind of some platforms. We found some amphitheaters that weren't being used, and we stayed distant, and we, and we rehearsed at different different parks all through the city and people would walk in and they would watch us and so they were experiencing live art <laughs> yes. and then we were on the plaza at northrop outside of northrop the, the theater they have a, a beautiful plaza mm -hmm. and we did uh some video work out there we did rehearsals there and then i think in the spring we got together masked and distant with our dancers and then once everyone was fully vaccinated mm. we felt much more comfortable having rehearsals together and then we were really kind of full steam ahead we had you know very rigorous rehearsal schedule mm -hmm. and it was just lovely it was just mm -hmm. amazing to be back in the studio with our dancers oh that's wonderful yes mm -hmm. some of that i've been in touch with your directors and just just asking that question, how did it feel to be all back together? And overwhelming responses, just so emotional and just, and just wonderful. And, but I do know there have been, you know, here and there are some challenges for all the dancers to get vaccinated because it isn't an individual thing, but I mean, it's, it's real. And this thing is not going away anytime soon, unfortunately. Absolutely, um, it's correct, it's correct. And so with, so it, how was it for, I mean, I don't really know the, the dance community or the, uh, in Minneapolis. And is, is there a large dance audience there? Absolutely. It's a very artistic community. We have a large theater community and we have many dancers and choreographers that work there. And we have a very loyal dance audience, actually. We have several theaters and we have an audience that's for our work. So we have been in, Raga Mala has been in existence for 30 years. And my, my and mother's- Bravo on that, I just read that. Thank I was like, wow, 30 years, awesome. And my uh, mother started working in Minneapolis over 40 years ago. Wow. And so the audience has grown, mm -hmm. but there has been an audience that has stayed with us the entire time, really taking this journey with us, experiment, watching our experiments, learning and deepening their understanding of this form mm -hmm. and this form's place on the landscape of American dance. And we're very grateful for that mm -hmm. because it is a, it, there's a learning curve, of course. And when you get to know a company's work, you really can appreciate and understand and, and you have a different perspective. So we're very mm -hmm. grateful for that audience. I love that. And tell me about, you know, the essence, you know, the, the traditional with the, the current. How do you, how do you make, create that hybrid? What's the, what's the ethos behind that? Absolutely. So the form we work in, Bharatanatyam, is said to have a, a, an ancient history. It goes back 2,000 years. Mm. But it's also a living language. We call it a language because it's a tool that choreographers and dancers use to communicate stories, to communicate new poems and ideas that we have. And so when you have a language, it's just like writing a poem or writing a book. We have the alphabet, mm -hmm. but the way one weaves it together is solely dependent on the creator. And we have those freedoms. When mm. we study this dance form, we learn it as an oral tradition. So we mm. learn it in person with our teacher for decades. And so not only the vocabulary and the foundation becomes so a part of who we are, but the ethos of the teacher. And what we do is we imbibe all of that and we really form our own artistic aesthetic from mm -hmm. that. And so once one has a foundation and once one feels they have the rules and they're really carrying a, a lineage with them, mm -hmm. it lives within each, each of us. And mm -hmm. so we create work that we're inspired to create living here in this country. It could be across genre. It could be um, with texts from, you know, that we are, are very excited about. But what our company does, what Rani and I initially create is we really look at our Indian histories. We look at the culture we come from, the music, mm. the spirituality, the, lit the literary traditions, and we find, and we find their complexity and yet their relevance in our world now. Mm -hmm. And so we don't look as 
at history as something that existed that is something that's not relevant to our lives, but rather a portal, which mm -hmm. we really need to understand our, our current lives mm -hmm. and our relationship with each other. Mm -hmm. That's fabulous. And so, I mean, it just, it just warms my heart to hear all of this because, I mean, traditions are, we have some traditions in the, in the United States, but not many because the, you know, this country is still very young. And so, but speaking of young, so I read that your mother started her training when she was eight or nine years old. Yes. So when, <laughs> when did she bring you into, into the art form? So I started studying with her when I was five. Oh, no. And then when I was eight years old, we met our teacher, Alarmil Vali, mm -hmm. who lives in India, but she happened to be in Minnesota for a residency and she was teaching um, of some workshops. Mm -hmm. And so we both took the workshop and she accepted us as her students and we have been partners in studying with her and then my sister became her student and so it's been a life time of learning from a great great master mm -hmm. and it's been a wonderful shared experience for us mm -hmm. that's so incredible and you know this is so special for me because actually this weekend my mom is visiting with me mm -hmm. she's actually being quiet in the other room well, my mother's being quiet in the other room <laughs> Well, say hello to your mother for me. But you know, she was here for my performances this week, and I mentioned that little islands. And I'm just, I love this idea of this family run dance company. And what is this like? What is it like working and creating, you know, with your, with your mother and your sister? What is that like? I mean, do you argue? You know? Yeah, everybody argues, but <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's been, it's been incredible. So my mother started working in this country, like I said, four decades ago, and mm -hmm. she's really been um, really a pioneer mm -hmm. in creating a space for our dance form. Mm -hmm. And she is, um, she's very, she's fearless. And it's been, it's been so inspiring. And I started working with her at a very young age mm -hmm. and I've just had a passion for this form my entire life. And mm -hmm. like I said, we have a, a very incredible relationship with, with our teacher. And so the three of us are, are really, what shall I say? We find this form such an incredibly large and wonderfully challenging mystery. Mm -hmm that we have dedicated our lives to it. And we find this, this, the opportunity to create together and run a company together. It's really wonderful. We have very distinct personalities, actually. <laughs> we have very shared aesthetics, but yes. different strengths mm -hmm. and challenges. And so we balance each other out very, very well. But it's, it's, we feel, we feel very fortunate to have a sounding board. Mm. It's, um, it, can be, it can be lonely if you're an artist working on your own. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we can share our ideas and also we feel that our ideas become stronger because we're always talking about them and we're developing them. Mm -hmm. And we have someone, we have people who are willing to listen. Yes. And what is some of the uh, community work and outreach that you guys do in, in Minneapolis? Sure. So we do a lot of work with young people. We work. Hey, with yes. Schools. We have been doing that for decades. Mm -hmm. We'll go to schools both in the city, but also in small towns in Minnesota. It's very important for people to see the diversity and see the the complexities and the richness of other art forms, obviously. And so we want to make sure that people all over the state, and we've done this all over the country as well. Um, in addition, we do a lot of talks and demonstrations, mm -hmm. and we want people to understand, like I said, the kind of living histories that these art forms are, mm -hmm. and the fact that they are creative, that they're not still, they're not museum pieces. <laughs> we do a lot of work in museums. We do work with with senior centers and oh. libraries, just oh. making sure that we're getting to every corner of a community mm -hmm. and making the work accessible, making mm -hmm. people understand that there are different, there are different ways that people can enter a work or a mm -hmm. form. Mm -hmm. And it may not be because of their love for dance, but it may be a certain text or it may be a certain kind of music that we're using or, mm -hmm. um, the story of the dancers who are in it. You know, I think there are different ways to bring people in and we want to make sure that we explore all those different, different ways. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so tell us, 
I mean, I'm sure you must be so excited to be, you know, coming to the Joyce this week. When do you guys get here? Are you here now? We're here now. We're, here. We're in Brooklyn. <laughs> Yay, Hello, Brooklyn. Brooklyn. So how does, how, I mean, I, I definitely want to get to the Joyce, but like, how, do, how does New York feel to you right now? It's interesting when we were coming in, so we came in from uh, New Hampshire and my sister was saying, oh my goodness, we haven't been here in a year and a half or two okay. years since, you know, right before, I think, before COVID. And it was just a, yesterday was a beautiful day and to see uh, people walking the street. And, and it's the, just, just being on the streets, people to see all of the seating outside for restaurants and people playing music on the streets and mm -hmm. people really enjoying the outdoor mm -hmm. spaces right now feels really heartwarming mm -hmm. and lovely. So it's been great. We were in rehearsal all day today. Mm -hmm. And so now we're here. So it hasn't been that much time. <laughs> it's been a few hours. <laughs> And I'm so excited for Aaron Maddox. I definitely want to give Aaron Maddox a shout out because Yay. they all come on board with the joys. I just feel that, I mean, the programming has been so wonderful and diverse and the live music element that, you know, that I think is wonderful. I mean, even as a dancer myself, like performing to, to actual, you know, live music and the acoustics of that, it just, it just changes something in the molecules when you're dancing to that as opposed to recorded music. I mean, it's just a whole different vibe. And so, so yeah, so, so now tell us about so actually, wait, I have my little booklet from the joys that I got. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to give my shout out to Aaron, too. Hi, Aaron. How are you? We're so yes. excited to see you. Exactly. And so here's, here's Ragamala Dance Company and yeah. the joys mailer that I get. I'm so excited. And also, if you guys are looking for tickets, I have um, the ticket link in my bio on my page. So please go get tickets, learn more about the company, and just support not only this company, this amazing company, but the Joyce reopening this is a you guys this is huge like we're going back inside so we got to be there and obviously the joyce has all their protocols in place and i feel very happy about that safe about that you know i actually just went to go see a massive show uh two weekends ago went to see the final dress rehearsal of the lion king and i'm in a theater with like two thousand people you oh. know masks and everyone had to show their vaccination mm -hmm. and we're all sitting there for like you know Two and a half hours. Wow. And we, sit, and we had a great time. So oh, it can be done. Lovely. And so actually, how long is your program? The program is a little under 90 minutes. It's doable, guys. So come out and get mm -hmm. it. <laughs> yes, can, please. Uh, yeah. So come about, see it. Yeah, it's about the piece, the program, and what we need to know, what we're going to see. Sure. So the piece is, is titled Fires of Varanasi, Dance of the Inter Eternal Pilgrims. I'll say that again. Fires of Varanasi, Dance of the Eternal Pilgrim. Mm. And so it, we have 11 dancers on stage. And I will say, though, that we have recorded music. It's all original recorded music. It's not live music. Mm -hmm. And that was always planned, even before COVID, because it's a, it, it has a set and we have, it's a very full stage. And so mm -hmm. when we usually have live music, we have them mm -hmm. on stage with us. And for this, it's a more theatrical piece. So we mm -hmm. wanted to make sure that the music was recorded and we had mm -hmm. the space for the dancers. Mm -hmm. The piece itself is about the cycle of life, death and rebirth in mm -hmm. our Hindu philosophy, our background, and how those, that idea and those philosophies use embodied ritual to find resilience and hope in our lives. Mm. So this mm. idea of physical and spiritual transcendence and how do we use our beliefs as a community, mm -hmm. our beliefs within ourselves, our relationship with the sacred mm. to find that resilience and find that that transcendence that we are all hoping for. And I think there are these ancient traditions that live within each of us. We each have our own cultural traditions that we bring. And we are given these traditions and these rituals from our ancestors and we carry them forward. We carry them forward in different ways. And mm -hmm. we move, when we move to new homes, they, they may change or we may adapt them. But our, our, that is a gift that we all carry and that we all can share with each other. And so these beliefs come from, from our heritage. And we created this piece when my grandfather passed five years ago, mm -hmm. now six years ago, actually. Mm -hmm. 
and doing all of the, the rites and rituals around his death, the, the idea is that it takes 11 days for the soul to unite with the ancestors. Mm. And then when a Hindu uh, passes on, their dream, their hope is that their ashes are immersed in the Ganges River in India, the sacred river, and with, with hopes of this transcendence. Mm -hmm. um, and so that is what this piece is about. But we've used the city of Varanasi, which is a sacred city in India, as the symbol. It's called the city of light. Mm. And so the idea that it does provide light and hope, and it has various sacred elements, like the river, like the Hindu deity Shiva. Mm. And it's a pilgrimage city. And so this activity and this constant engagement with people and and the rituals that, that us, that we as pilgrims um, take on in our lives, it's very important. So it's actually a very, um, it's a very uplifting piece about how we as individuals and how we all come together to, to achieve all of this. I think it's perfect for these times, even though it was started before these times. It was, yes. Where we are right now, I think this is such a beautiful message for what we need right now. Um, and that was even part of what I read that, you know, you're believing, you know, and in, in these, uh, just bringing all these things together, that these are things that we need in these current days in our stage right now. And so does the, the, the piece, you said 90 minutes, does it run straight through? Will it be it does. Answer? It runs straight through. Yes. Beautiful. And so is your, your mother is dancing. I'm holding. Absolutely. Yes. She looks wonderful and she's dancing. Oh and, my goodness. Um, yeah. There are 11 of us. So we are so thrilled to be performing again and to be able to see people in the house and engage with them. You know, it's, it's so important for, for artists to have that spontaneous communication with our audiences and with each other. It's what keeps us going and makes us feel alive. Yes. And the part of the, that I read that's intergenerational. And so are there many elders? I mean, I just had, did a performance last night with, um, I mean, an elder elder, but he's 74, Hank Smith on stage and just sharing the space with someone that many years my senior. And I did a film last year for one of our virtual presentations that featured Gus Solomon Jr. And he's in his 80s and still creating and putting out, you know, the arts, uh, his artistic, you know, output, you know? Yes. And so what's, what's the age range of the company? So the company ranges from 18 to 69. Yeah. <laughs> That's so beautiful. And there's so much to share. There's so much to share both ways. Right? Exactly, exactly. And we really feel that when we're together on stage, you know, there's definitely a, a wisdom. Mm -hmm. And then there's a there's the joy of youth and that spark. Yeah. And 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 people move differently in, at different stages of their lives. Absolutely. They respond to music differently and they respond to these themes, this idea of the sacred, of being surrounded by the sacred, mm -hmm. that is, is also understood differently at different ages. Yes. Oh, I think that's beautiful. You're absolutely right about that. So, I mean, anything else you want to share about this week? Oh, and there's also, there's a curtain talk, right? We yes, know. we're going to be on stage with Aaron on Thursday after the performance. Then I should come on Thursday. Okay. <laughs> Great. Oh, but it, you know. And um, I think that's everything. I think yeah. that's everything. We have a program that does uh, delve in more into the piece and our inspirations behind it. So I think that's actually a physical program. Some venues are doing it online, so I just wasn't sure if oh, okay. uh, that was also something people could read in advance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's awesome. So I just want to say thank you for taking this time. I know this is your day off probably before you go into the theater tomorrow um, and load in or rehearse do the tech and all of that good stuff. And that's so exciting. I'm so happy for you all. I'm also happy for the Joyce. I'm happy for our city and for dance. And you know, we're just getting into the Joyce, but what's next for you all? Where do you go after the Joyce in the New York? So after the Joyce, we take this work to the Harris Theater in Chicago. 
Oh, great. Yes. Yes. And then we travel um, to Southern California. Mm -hmm. We bring it to Minnesota. We'll take it to yes. North Carolina um, at the American Dance Festival. Nice. And somewhere in there, the three of us, the Ramaswamis, will be in residence in Boliasco, Italy, working on a new piece. I saw that, yes. And all that's on their website, guys. So please, I'll link the website as well to my, my link tree after this. But please go to the link and get your tickets and go see this beautiful, beautiful, transcendent, company and be ready to be uplifted and just overjoyed and just celebrate what is happening because this is an important move forward and us reclaiming our our lives and humanity so oh that's so again, true thank you congratulations to all of you and stay safe and beautiful and i will see you at the joys thank you so much it's been such a pleasure thank you for having me on we will Absolutely. see you this week yes take care yes. do you know how to close out are you good with that yeah, I think I'm okay, good. Perfect. Take care. Right. Bye. Bye. Great show. Great run. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> yes. Okay, wonderful. Oh, my God. Just beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Thank you all for tuning in for this special edition for my Danny D Live Monday. And uh, good luck to Uraga Mala Dance Company. And just, I'm just so excited. I'm excited for, again, the Joyce. I'm excited for our dance community here in New York and just around the country and just us getting back to, you know, what we know and love, what we've dedicated our lives to. So one quick, um, one quick little sad note. Um, oh, you're so welcome, Erin. I will see you this week at the theater. Thank you, Melissa. Um, just prayers up to the family of Sarah Dash from the legendary group La Belle. Uh, right before I came on, I was notified of her passing. And so just, you know, prayers up. She's an incredible tour de force vocalist and just iconic in the music world. And so for Sarah Dash, we, our hearts go out to her family and loved ones and friends and fans around the world um, and just rest in peace. And so, um, yeah, so just at the end of a sad note, but it's also still a positive and happy note that we are, you know, this is a cycle of life, you know, and this is this is where we are. So we have to really cherish each moment um, as it as it is. And don't put things off. If there's something you want to do, if there's someone that you want to say you love, if there's, you know, just somewhere you want to go safely, of course, just don't wait. Just do it. Just do it. And so if, if nothing else, this, this weekend of dancing at Little Island taught me is just say yes, embrace the moment. Be in the moment, you know, reach for your passions and dream, dream big. So thank you guys for tuning in for this Monday special edition Danny G Live. If you missed any part of it, it will be archived on my IGTV in about 20 minutes or 10, and as well as my YouTube channel. And if you haven't subscribed yet, it's Danny G TV. I cracked 300. <laughs> I'm in the big time. And yeah, so stay safe, stay strong. I love you, New York, and be kind. And I will... See you soon. Thank you, Erin. Yes. See you soon, people. Stay, stay safe out there in the streets. Okay. <laughs> Bye.